I live close to an old, closed down and overgrown train line. I've been coming here for years and I've watched, even in my lifetime, as the old bridges rot. I run here a lot, two or three times a week, lapping through sections of single track, tracks that always come back to the old line as if some kind of handrail. I know that bushy section of track really well, but the rest, it was long sold off, not long after closing down in 1958. It was the end of an era where the world of trains and lines had become one of roads and cars. A lot of people have forgotten about the 43 kilometres of track and the nine stations, but the line still exists. A deep and mostly obvious scar in the landscape. Some of it's covered by this kind of glaciation of houses and other sections are as obvious as day. While running one day, I thought, why don't I join the line back together? Be the first person since 1958 to run the line. I run the Ropey Rail Trail all, all the time, and I yep. thought, oh, why don't you if I just stitched it all back together, you know? The train is about to depart in the form of one bed. See, that's new. That's a new bit. Wow, <laughs> 60 years old. There's the new G line there. That's probably the only bit that still exists. It's actually railway. You know, this is the first time this has been run since 1958. It's a bit of fun. <laughs> I've looked at Google Earth a few times and I know the terrain pretty well. I've lived here my whole life, but I don't know all the intricate natures of where this train line goes. And that's really important to tap into an unscripted type of run for me now. You know, running a 43k route, you know, yes, I'll be engaged and I'll be looking for things and I'll be curious, but this means a lot more to me when I, I don't really know what's going to happen. I don't know how long it's going to take. I'm starting at dawn to give me the best chance of getting there in daylight. <laughs> because it's going to take a while. I don't know what I'm going to say to people when they pull me up on run, running through their property. Don't shoot. Um, don't shoot, yeah, and just, um, and I'll be nice. I'll just be nice. <laughs> My name's Dominic. I own part of the old Warrigal Nuji railway line. We've got rogue hunters, people walking all over it, motorbikes, four-wheel drivers, trees that drop and fall, li uh, drop limbs, and, you know, basically, you know, walking around on my place and I suddenly find someone trespassing on it, I'm not a very happy person. I mean you no harm. The shovel is not made for you, it's made for blackberries. Can I just pass on silently, like a train would? <laughs> like, I don't know. I might just jump down onto the train tracks and get out of Dodge. I'm not a surveyor, I'm not an archaeologist. I haven't done a lot of homework on where and how this train line exists, so I'm just going to try and find it, you know. I reckon it's going to make sense. You can still see the arc. It's bloody exciting. Here it is. I've never been on this bit. And then the road, which has got this beautiful curve. I always wondered why it's got a curve. Here she goes. Here's the railway. I imagine train drivers are hot all the time, so it's fitting that I'm already sweating up a storm. Feels great. This feels great doing something a bit odd. Oh, there's our first blockage, a house. So the train would have come straight through here. Yeah, I don't know, if I was sitting there having my cup of tea and a bloke just kept wanders through looking like a, you know, idiot train driver with a shovel, <laughs> I'm probably gonna get up and say, mate, get out of, get out of here. You're not supposed to be here, train driver man. I'm just going to go around now because it's backed onto more and more houses so I don't want to go down that road just yet. It's my first fence and I'm into my first sort of paddock. All right. There's my first cow shit. This was a little tricky to navigate through the outskirts of Warrigal. First paddock, first little creeklet and I'm only about probably 20 or 30 metres off the train line. 
look at that, no railway tie. No railway tie. Check it out, fantastic. The genuine thing. Okay, good. I can see the platform, there it is. There's the raised bit of platform, I think. I don't know the story yet. That excites me. When I present in class, I only want to know roughly what I'm going to talk about. Some of the big themes. And I don't want this to be a script, and I know it's not going to be. I'm really curious about these old paths of people going places and what it meant. You know, the train line ran for 70 or 80 years. And it dictated all the little towns and villages out there and where farms are and where roads are and where people live and where they put their house. My grandparents remember the last train that ran. It was a big deal for the towns. And it's odd to think that the first and last trains were celebrated for such different reasons. I think it's easy to forget about eras before our current one, especially when they get lost under layers of new suburbs and development. But yeah, that's the old line. This is it now. So following a very simple idea to run the old train line, it forces my hand a little to think about what's so easy to forget. And I think that's really important, given so much of our past is hard to see. There comes a time where you have to actively search out history. This is electrified up. I'm out of the town limits, which is nice, because that was just a cluster of houses and fences, and here's the first station, here's Lilico Station. There's the, the push-up of it. So, I'm gonna have a, a look. <laughs> ah, an old tank. This would have been where the station was. It would have been a hive of, I suppose, activity for farm stuff. You can see these grand old gums. A whole other era, Lilico. Awesome, first station. All aboard. The train line is now owned by hundreds of people. Its identity is no longer a line, but these individual bits and pieces divided up by fences. I had no idea how many fences I'd cross, nor how hard it was to be a ghost in a treeless landscape in the middle of the day. My thinking was that by continually moving and being mindful of the animals, I wasn't doing anyone any harm. Yeah, hard to see where it is here. I have no idea. There would have been a railway crossing. Oh yeah. Here's the police. I don't know for us. They might have been called out, someone. Hello mate. What's going on? I'm running the old railway line. Yeah right. We've got a few people ringing just saying that you're going through the paddocks. Yeah. People are just like, we don't know what he is, what's going on. So, that's right. What's your name? Bo Miles of Jindavik. A bit of a runner, I've got uh, the... How far is the track? Uh, 43 k's. Yeah right. Which is, you know, roughly a marathon, so that's why I'm kind of doing it. Yeah, yeah. Is that alright? Cool with us. <laughs> you're not crazy, so that's alright. No, I'm not crazy. Uh, <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> cool, that. Good on you. All right, take care, mate. Thanks, yeah. folks. Good on you. They were actually pretty good. They were fairly cold to start with, but then warmed up. Um, and apparently, one woman is um, pretty cross that I went through her property. So I, I get that. I don't want to disappoint anyone. I'm just doing something that's a story in their area. I was about to run through the old town of Bullen Bullen which has a fascinating history of moving things about. My dad's gallery is the relocated Bull and Bull and Town Hall, which he moved in 1990, which was actually its second move, having been dragged from another town 100 years earlier. I helped rebuild that hall in my teens and then got married there recently. As a boy, I played a sports final on the Bull and Bull and ground and I knew nothing of the old train line that was under my feet. I'm about to join the, the little patch that I've run hundreds of times. 
not really well. Beautiful piece of uh, railway. In fact, the, the only real intact bit that doesn't have um, farmland either side of it. About four k's worth. <sighs> Running what was last time run by big steel wheels. What a cool idea. At least I think it's a cool idea. Just past Bravington Station. I grew up just up the road from Bravington as a little red-headed kid. And then Ropey Station, which fun fact was actually called Jindavik Station because Jindavik was bigger at the time when the line went in. I'm not now living Jindavik, so we had our own station. Runners are rhythm people, and I imagine train drivers are as well. Both are reliant on distance and speed and time and how their moving parts travel over terrain. When your rhythm stops all of a sudden to navigate unrunnable track, it accentuates just how attached we are to a certain kind of pace. I suppose my heartbeat is like the chug of an engine and the repeat of wheels. But you know what? I don't care much for distance over time now, like a train driver pushing to make stations on time. I want to be engaged with what's around me, not my watch or distance markers. I want to be distracted by the trail or the lack of one. And I want to work hard to get where I'm going. This is my new kind of running which in some ways isn't running at all, it's exploring, and I bloody love it. All right, get through this jumbled section of, of wetness and tree branches. Through here. There's the old platform. Crossover. Train would have come through here. Toot toot. Well, that was the most intense bit so far. That took half an hour to do 500 meters. I've got leftovers. Just like train drivers, they would have sat here at the siding and Waited to be loaded up for a few minutes and had some tucker. So I'm gonna have some really appealing pasta. This is what it's about, eh? I was just about to say I didn't sign up for this shit when I was going through all those blackberries, but yes you did, Bo. It's exactly what you signed up for. Deal with it. <laughs> That's why I bought a shovel. That's complete, everything's wet. There's not a dry bone. Look at, look at the sweat. That's, it's pretty sweaty. <laughs> Just working hard. Well, I'll be. Our farmer's put his bales on the line. Blackberries, I'm going over. Right, eh? Well, that's a bit novel. Oh, that feels good. That's spongy. Yeah. Hello, blackberries. Here's another fence. This one doesn't have electricity running through it, which is good for my balls. Look at that, no electricity, thank you. All good. Yeah, there you go, some old bits of bridge. I worry about trespassing. They're good people. You know, I had to go real slow then through a full, you know, full herd, 300 dairy cows. And they're used to people, you know, so you can just walk right through them. 
but they'll still be skittish if I start running or do anything silly and you wouldn't want to send a horse or a whole herd of cows through a fence that's where I maybe just have to go down here and then cut across just come through a magic section with an old piece of bridge and look there's old railway sleepers look at that Finding evidence of the old line helps imagine what it was like to have trains run through this landscape. All those moving parts and the engineering and the effort, and then all of a sudden it stops. No longer a line where people come and go. It's nice to see big old gum trees that survived the line going in. Hundreds of years old, they've been here across all the eras. And like grandparents sitting on the porch, they look on as some random fella runs past. What I didn't think this would be so good for, I didn't think of it, was crossing creeks. You just pop it in the middle of the creek and do a whoop. Get over like that, nice and easy. I feel like I'm getting wise. There she is, clear as day. 28 degrees today, really unseasonal. Too hot for a redhead. It's rolling along real good. Forget how much I enjoy this stuff, grinding away. I'm thinking about the finish line, don't you worry about that. That's part of my DNA too. But I think you gotta pretty much... Shut up, boy, just have something to eat, mate. Oh, this has got a bit of leftover coffee in the bottom of it. Oh yeah. Dustings of coffee. I can see off into the hills and that's where Warrigal is, so I'm getting a bit of distance between me and the start. I like sunscreen. I like it a lot. In two minutes time at six hours. And so um, there's been a lot of, you know, beating through bush and going the long way around and, you know, in and under fences. And I'm, I'm self filming as I go too, of course. So I'm doing some out and backs and scratching the you know, nose of a cow. And they're, they're, they're cool things. It's really engaging. It's super engaging. So six hours of this, you know, it feels like two, but it's been six full blown hours. No, mate, just push it on, it's all good. So it's a very, they're very different marathons, and that's the point, you know, you're sort of just making these weird marathons, and they're excellent. It's amazing landscape, bloody amazing. Having the, the mindset of a surveyor, you know, trying to find their way through. And some of the cuttings are huge, you know, in big fills, you know, so they'll cut out a steep bit and fill it in one of the gullies or whatever, and they're, they're amazing, they're just there. The beauty of um, running is you're often thinking in very immediate loops. Your feedback loops are really short. You're just thinking, oh, there's a blade of grass. There's a, oh, look at that cow. God, that's a funny angle of a tree. Or, gee, oh, I, can, oh, I can hear the truck. I haven't heard a truck for a while. So you just, you follow these sort of little stupid incidental things in your mind, which is nice. I'm getting some bad chafe on my back, so I'm holding my back as I run. There's a big hole wearing through my spine. <laughs> so. I've got a bit of a weird running style at the moment, but it works. All right, I'll go around because these people are looking at me funny. Well, that is a good bit of, good bit of mushy. Good bit of bush tucker as we go along. Probably a touch old. <laughs> Give me something to think about. I'm still not 100% on what the full story of this run is. A recreation of a train line that stopped 60 years ago. I suppose it's to stitch together my local history. Better understand what took place here before I came along. And oddly enough, I'm starting to think about this place for its many phases. Not just the one I'm in now. The indigenous culture before white folks came along and now the changing face of white culture within it. That's really important. Old train lines represent, you know, this industrial world just pushing, pushing, pushing into everywhere and anywhere, wherever there was something to exploit or settle 
or find. Okay. This is like treasure hunting. This is what it's all about. There were seven of these big bridges out here. The last section of the line was all about getting around these hills. Massive span using massive timbers. And this is forests, these are the biggest trees in the world out here. And everything around me, this was all cleared to make farmland and I suppose to make the bridges and to fuel the trains. Awesome. And you know what, there's, there's one that still remains. It was rebuilt a few times, it survived a bunch of fires and the plucky old engineers, they kept rebuilding and that's coming up. Just brilliant. Today was one of the hardest runs of my life, genuinely. You know, 10 hours or so, no change out of 50 clicks, all those fences and the add-ons. I am redhead cooked. Today was hot. Three pots of leftover pasta just didn't cut the mustard, I think. Tried a little too hard to be a 50s train driver. No electrolytes and no instant sugars. So a tip of the cap to the legs. Good on you, fellas. They really are my currency. They allow me to experience so much my running legs. Just as well though, it was a steady downhill section after the bridge. Just popped into neutral and wobbled home. Ah, <sighs> you little ripper. It's a beautiful morning. I really like being alone. I think that's why I like running so much. What do you think, Magpie? What's the point of all this? I'm out here for closure. You got any insights? Actually, you're good because I can have the conversation with you rather than these static cameras. I'm starting to trust myself more and more, Magpie, with following curious tendencies. It's good. I used to go to the ends of the earth to try and find adventure. It's under my nose here, on all these sort of multi-layered things that happen in my own backyard. I'm passing on stories to my family. You know, it's just last week, I came out here with Gran and Mum and, and Helen and we explored this, this amazing valley of huge timber, which is why the train line was put in in the first place. You know, I'm connecting the dots of all this history around me. It's just marvellous. So I think that's the big takeaway. Explore your backyard. Follow your nose on a half cooked idea on something that's only half there. Run the line. Where's that magpie gone? It's good coffee out of a plastic cup with milk that tastes like gherkins. I like that too, that's a bit quirky. Would you like a gherkin milk with that coffee, sir? or regular milk. I love gherkin milk, mate. <laughs>